Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Just Said Ryan playing Octopath Traveler 2. Last episode we did uh, one of the chapters of Particio. I haven't recorded this in, well, since my last recording session, <laughs> which has been more than a week. Um, anyway, in this episode we're going to go and begin by doing, um, by doing the cross paths between the scholar and the merchant, which is going to be intriguing. Energy is incomparable to anything I felt in prison. In the air, it's so fresh. <laughs> Smells like a deal to me. I bet you can't help but trip over opportunity in a town like this. Certainly tripped over something. Uh, hey, what's the matter, fella? I am a scholar. But I am soon to starve and become a useless lump of meat. Well, we can't have that now, can we? Here, have a bite of this bread. Oh, my savior. Ah, you have saved me. Yes, thanks to you, I can continue my scholarly pursuits. Good gracious. This is my first meal in three days, nine hours, and 23 minutes. Now, hang on. You telling me you were counting minutes even as you were dying of hunger? It is in a scholar's nature to keep records, no matter how dire the situation. <coughs> Oswald? It is you, isn't it? Oswald! Huh? You two know each other? <laughs> we were friends in our academy days. <laughs> it has been quite some time. We frequently bring the fruits of our research to bear in our spirited discussions, huh? So then, what brought you here? <laughs> Procuring research materials, old fellow. For a, uh, hold your applause, a uh, earth-shattering invention. Oh, sounds nice. What is it? Most curious. Shall we talk it over? How this takes me back, Oswald. Let us do so, over drinks. If we're in agreement, well, I shall go right on ahead. To the stars. To which we mere mortals turn our gaze and use to delineate our dreams. Though they are far, far beyond our grasp. <laughs> and so, I have devised a device that will allow us to bring them right before our eyes. I call it the Astronomical Telescope. Hoo-wee! The stars have been humanity's guide since time immemorial. They know the truth of this world. But I shall be the one to lay their mysteries bare. You haven't changed a bit, Regulus. Golly, that there's one astronomical sized dream. Well, go on. Show us this telescope of yours, Regulus. You've piqued my interest as well. Is it complete? It will be soon. Rather, it was supposed to be. No, oh, if only I had hit it big at the game parlor, mm. I would have secured the last of my funds. You don't mean the uh, 
odds were ever in my favor, but the stars abandoned me in my hour of need. You just misread your odds. Betting is a simple matter of probability. You've always had an exceptionally keen mind, but you're a fool when it comes to money. I see you have not mellowed with age. Say, Regulus, how much coin you got in those pockets of yours? This is all I have to my name. Yep, sure are hard up. You were hoping we'd treat you to food and drinks from the start, weren't you? <laughs> Oh, hell. You got me all riled up now. What say you give me that coin? Invest this coin in me, and I reckon I can get you everything you need for your telescope. No, don't encourage. My savior. We need three components in order to complete my astronomical telescope. A metal working tool, a mirror, and a precision lens. Particio here shall control all the funds. Yep, leave it to me, friend. I'll get you what you need. I shall await you in the square in front of the theater. I pray to the stars for your every success. Don't get no help from me. Indulging him never ends well. <laughs> well, all right then. Was me that got the boasting anyhow. Now, I'd best get to negotiate. Six hundred leaf. Nice. I want to <clears throat> take a look to see if I can get. Um. Receive ten percent off purchases. I want to see if I can get like earn twenty five percent more from sales. Earn five to forty percent more from sales. I don't, don't really need sales. I need. Uh, 5% off purchases. Hmm. I wonder, does it also factor in um hmm. <clears throat> receive fifteen percent off of purchases? I'll take it. Let's get to work. Oh, whoopsie. Because it could be I'm quite busy. Alright, I need to turn into that. <laughs> That's how it works. Give me that mirror. And I get some money. Okay. I usually don't buy in general, but you know, if I do, then I should definitely have somebody who can give me some money. Thank you, Thank you kindly. <laughs> like taking candy from a baby. I got all three pieces. Time to head on over to Regulus at the square in front of that theater. In front of that there theater. 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 What's right, up? How this do you, Regulus? Oh. Oh. 
You are truly a god among mortals. A messiah. He is the messiah. Save this world. <clears throat> <laughs> That's taking it a bit too far, ain't it? I'll surely be able to assemble the telescope with these parts. Thank you ever so much. I cannot waste another second. The time has come to seal myself in my laboratory. You may find me in Montwise. Do drop by if you happen to pass through. And once my telescope is complete, we can stare the mysteries of the night sky right in the eye. <laughs> all the mysteries of the night sky, huh? <laughs> that gets me all excited. Then perhaps we shall pay him a visit soon. Just keep your expectations low. <clears throat> okay, that is that then. Ba -da -ba -dum. So next on the list is going to be Agnes chapter three. Yes. <laughs> Let me go uh, and get some other people. Maybe I'm definitely gonna need Agnia. Um. So Agnia. And everybody is the same level, so I guess I can just stick around to this party. Sure, that works. Oh yeah. Let us hear a tale, shall we? Song of Hope. And I told Gil I'd find words for the song he composed, but. Inspiration hasn't struck me just yet. But I'm sure I'll find the words eventually. I just have to keep going until I do. Now then, this town looks like a fine place to stop on my journey. Oh, goddess, lend me your strength. Huh? Tansy can budget. This is all your fault for wanting to take a shortcut, Tansy. We wouldn't be in a rush if you hadn't overslept, Rico. We were already pressed for time because the ship was late, and now this thing won't budge. Say, Coda, if pushing doesn't work, why don't we pull? Let's give it a try. Wait. Just what do you think you're doing? Sorry. <laughs> Improvisation! I love it! That's the true spirit of comedy. How can you be so calm, boss? Everyone will laugh at us if we perform without our wagon and props. Then I'll consider it a success. Not even gold shines brighter than a smile. Come on, there's gotta be something we can do. Oh, think, think. Uh, oh, goddess, dear goddess. Pardon me, but I know a way to get your wagon moving again. Really? Are you from around here? No, I'm just a traveler. Would you happen to have a sturdy stick lying around? Hmm. Rico, Coda, could you help this woman find what she needs? Will this do? You can't be serious. That's Coda's flute. I see. 
Just wait right here then. I'll go find one. <clears throat> Find a sturdy stick. It's going quite a bind. If this sword, if this sword can help, please take it. Kid, but we owe you one. <laughs> Don't mention it. I learned a lot playing in the mud growing up. <laughs> You're stronger than you look. What's your name? Agnia. Agnia Bristarni. Bristarni. Well, in any case, we owe you a debt of gratitude, Agnia. We're a roaming band of entertainers. We call ourselves Giselle's Traveling Troop. Whoa! That dove appeared out of thin air! <laughs> I'm glad <coughs> you like it. In my eyes, not even the shine of gold compares to that of a smile. That's why the girls and I travel the world, hoping to make it shine. Bringing smiles to every corner of the realm. That's our motto. <laughs> How wonderful! I'm a dancer. I'm on a journey to become a star. That's fantastic! Right, Rico? Coda? You're a woman with dreams, Agnia. A star is someone who illuminates people's lives. She makes them smile in the best and worst of times. She's there, come rain or shine. It's a feat that only those who keep getting up on stage can achieve. Yes, ma'am. Boss, it's almost time for rehearsal. Time flies when you're having fun, doesn't it? I hope we meet again someday, my dear dreamer. We'll be putting on a show later. If you have time, why don't you come see it? I promise it'll make you smile. I can't even imagine what sort of show brings smiles to every corner of the realm. I could learn a thing or two from them. I better hurry. Wouldn't want to miss it. Make for the for the for the theater. <laughs> I can't speak. Sometimes. Keeping an eye out. I guess we should start looking. Oh, Agnia. Is something wrong? What happened to your show? We have a runaway. A runaway? You mean your dove? Don't worry, I'll help you find it. No, it's not the dove. It's boss. But what? What do you mean? Sometimes her nerves get to her before a show. But we have to bring her back. We can't perform without our leading lady. <sighs> oh, goddess. Let me help. 
I don't quite understand why she's run away, but... We have to find her. For the audience's sake. Thank you, Ignea. Thank you! Music and atmosphere is so good in these games. Oh. <clears throat> Giselle, there you are. Well, if it isn't the dreamer. Your troop said you ran away. Did something happen? It all disappeared. Every line I was supposed to say just vanished. My mind went completely blank during rehearsal. Imagine if that happened in a real performance. It's happened before, and every time, I just ran away. I'm not meant for the stage anymore. My life as a performer is over. Giselle... But what about your audience? They've been looking forward to your show. I envy the sea. It has no worries. It feels no pain. It must be nice, not being swayed by anyone. Sometimes I wish I could just sink to the bottom of the ocean. And rest there peacefully, like a seashell. Leader of a group of traveling performers, she plays their leader role in their productions and is known for her theatrical and amusing mannerisms upon the stage. She and her friends travel the realm with their wagon of stage equipment in two. Giselle, you said you wanted to be a seashell, right? Mm. But you can't. You can't just go giving up like that. Giving up? Life ain't always easy. Everybody knows that. But making people smile? That's why you and I live and breathe. <sighs> Agnea. Oh! What happened to your feet? They've got calluses all over. Don't tell me. You got all those from dancing? I can't imagine how much that hurt, and at your tender age. These are nothing. They were worth it to bring smiles to people's faces. <sighs> so chin up, Giselle. Even if you forget your lines, you just learn them again. Believe in yourself. You can do anything you set your mind to. is someone who illuminates people's lives, right? So even if you stumble, you just have to get back on your feet. Hmm. Just get back on your feet, huh? Yeah. It's high time you came out of your shell, Giselle. Besides, you're not a seashell. You're a shiny pearl. And I think the world could use your radiance. Agnea. You're right. I have to get back on my feet. That's the spirit. Now let's go. Agnea, could I see your legs for a moment? Oh, of course. I thought this might be the case. We've been putting far too much strain on them. You need to take proper care of your legs. They carry you everywhere, after all. F you're right. Let me apply some balm to help them heal. Thank you, Cassie. I'll always be in tip-top shape for dancing with you around.
while journeying across the land with our trusty wagon, we arrived here on Tropu Hopu. We've come to shine upon the flowers in your hearts, that they may bloom into smiles. We are Giselle's traveling troop, bringing smiles to every corner of the realm. I can't thank you enough, Egnia. You helped us get our wagon out of the mud, and even helped Boss find her courage again. <sighs> I'm sorry. I got worked up, so... I might have gotten a little carried away. You don't need to apologize. We're grateful to you. She puts on quite the show, doesn't she? She sure does. Boss's bad habit of running away had our troop constantly on the move. But when she stands upon that stage, she shines brighter than anyone. What sort of spell did you cast on her, Agnia? I've never seen her this radiant before. Praise be the goddess for this day. Thank you, thank you. It warms my heart to see you all smile like this. Now then, there's someone I'd like to introduce to you all. I owe a great deal to her for setting me on the right path. Please welcome Agnia, the traveling dancer. Me? That's your cue. Show us a dance, will you? <laughs> if you insist. Watch me shine. I want to thank everyone for our successful show tonight, and Agnia for touching my heart. Your heart? I can say without a doubt that you'll bring happiness to people the world over. D do you really think so? I agree. You're going to be a star someday. Speaking of stars... That reminds me of Zoltanea! <laughs> I think Agnia here can outshine even that superstar. You've got a real talent for making people smile. I... I don't know what to say. But we won't go down without a fight. We're going to keep practicing. We have to! For the Grand Gala! The Grand Gala? It's the greatest festival on the Eastern Continent! Entertainers and dancers from all across the realm gather there! Standing upon that stage is the greatest honor there is for performers like us! Wow, that sounds like a dream come true! Well, my mind's made up! I'm going to that gala. You too, Agnia? I just have a feeling that I need to be there if I'm going to be a star. Which is why I have to go. Woohoo! I remember now why your name sounds so familiar. You've got the same last name as Kwani Bristarni, the star from the West. You knew my mother? I see. So you're her daughter. 
I heard about her when I went to the town of Sai in the West for a show. They said she danced there about 20 years ago. She was well loved by everyone, just like you. I had no idea. I think I'd like to see this town for myself. I might be able to learn something about my mother there. There's still time before the gala this year. It might not be a bad idea to pay that place a visit. I believe I will. Thank you, Giselle. Acnea, you gave me more courage than I've ever had before. But I haven't been able to give anything to you in return. Giselle... That's not true. You've all given me so much. <laughs> the beauty of French. That's so? Then... I'm happy. Good luck on your journey, Agnia. No matter what happens, keep smiling. If you do, happiness is sure to find you. Those are beautiful words. Would you mind if I use them in a song? <laughs> It'd be my honor. Goodbye for now, Agnia. May the goddess be with you. See you! Safe travels, everyone. I'll see you at the Grand Gala. I look forward to it already. Just please don't run away this time, boss. Don't worry. I'm not going anywhere. And even if I stumble, I just have to get back on my feet. Right, Agnia? <laughs> right. Agnia has set her sights on a new goal. Performing at the Grand Gala. She believes the dancing upon the stage there will lead her to stardom. Her fateful meeting with Giselle's traveling troupe provides her with a verse to the Song of Hope. But before the gala, she decides to visit a town her mother once danced in. It's still so interesting to me that like the chapters aren't like like they were in Octopath 1, where it's like guaranteed to have like a dungeon and a boss every single chapter. It's just sometimes there's just like a chapter with just random stuff happening. It's wild. Um yeah. Okay, so I got a party ready and all that jazz for nothing. Um, 34, so a lot of those are in the 30s. 26, 24. And 24 over here. Let's go and do casties. Uh, well, I can still stick with the same party because literally nothing happened. According to my treatment log, I've been here before. I have no memory of that visit, of course, and yet I am at ease here. Hmm? It can't be. Uh yes, is that you? What's all this ruckus? She's back! Miss Casty is back! Casty? No kidding? Welcome back, dear. We were all hoping to see your face around here again. Excuse me, but... You recognize me? Huh? What 
are you saying? How could I forget you after all you did for us? Oh, forgive me, but I have lost my memories. I came here in hopes of finding something that would jog my memory. Well, we'd all be happy to talk your ear off if it helps. Okay, inquiring, huh? A hunter who once let a minor, uh, let a minor injury fester for so long it left him bedridden. Cassie narrowly saved him and made sure to give him a nice long lecture on the perils of procrastination once he recovered. Thank you. A woman utterly exhausted from taking care of her ailing mother. Cassie's kind counsel helped her gather herself and see her mother off this mortal coil. She'd been passing on Cassie's advice to other caretakers Thanks. ever since. Cassie discovered this woman had a malignant tumor when visiting the village uh, as part of Ayr's apothecaries. She fortunately found it near uh, early enough, sorry, to treat her and avoid major health Thank incidents. You. Thank you, everyone. Just say the word, Miss Cassie. I'd be happy to chat for hours. Though, come to think of it, a Lady Rosa was the one closest to you. Rosa. She's ruler of these lands. You'll find her in her manor in the northwest of town. <laughs> Thank you for all your help. I'll go see her at once. I almost forgot, but I found a leaf on the road yesterday. Ooh, you're one lucky apothecary. Maybe, but I figured a person who dropped it was in a bind, so I handed it over to the local magistrate. Huh, <laughs> that's nice of you. Hope it finds its way back to its proper owner. A mention of luck reminds me, reminded me, but when I stopped by the tavern the other day, the barkeep started whooping and shouting, said I, said I was their thousandth customer and gave me half, of my, half, half on my drinks. Half off on my drinks. Tarnation Locke herself must be watching over you. Perhaps. Lately I have the strangest feeling. That something is watching over me. Huh. I wonder if there's actually something going on with that or if it's just a joke. This person seems to recognize me as well. I apologize for the sudden intrusion, but I would like to request an audience with Lady Rosa. Word of your coming has already reached us. This way, please. Brother to the Glenville family who oversees the town who oversees the town of Winterbrun. She's followed Rosa like a shadow since her ladyship was young. Though a woman of few words, she has served Rosa extremely well over the years. Thank you. Lady Rosa. Just Rosa will do. No need for formality between old friends. So it's true. You really don't remember. There's time for that later. You need medicine. I'll... No need. I already have some. This is the medicine you prepared for me. It is? <laughs> Dozens of apothecaries saw me before you came. They all declared me incurable. Lost cause. But you 
were different. I owe my life to your fortitude and skill. Oh, I'm glad to hear I was able to help you. Would you allow me to examine you? The medicine appears to be slowing the disease's progress, but your entire body is showing signs of mild paralysis. At this rate, you won't last another month. I'm aware. Only a few grains of sand remain in my hourglass. Yet, I wish to live just a little longer. Rosa. Mother, I've brought your medicine. Casty? It's me, Malia. Malia? So long. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this hurts me <laughs> so much. <laughs> anyway. from the herb garden every day just like you told me garden what garden the one you planted for us for mother a garden with the right herbs I may be able to craft a special elixir for Rosa would you show me to this garden of yours it would be my pleasure the garden is next to the house I'll go ahead and unlock it. Rest easy, Rosa. I'll be back soon. Casty, how is Lady Rosa? I won't mince words. She doesn't have long. Nevertheless, she's fighting with all her strength to hold on. <sighs> Lady Rosa suffers for the sake of her family and her legacy. Malia is still a mere child of 11 years. In the laws of our land, she cannot inherit her mother's estate until she is 12. If the lady perishes before her daughter comes of age, her lands and her title will pass to her next nearest kin. So Rosa wants to pass on her estate to Malia. That's why she's so desperate. I'll do everything I can for her. I promise you. I'll see that Rosa's hopes do not crumble around her. These plants are well tended. I've taken care of them every day, Casty, just like you taught me. <laughs> You're such a good daughter, Malia. <laughs> Thanks. May I take some cuttings? I need them to mix an elixir for your mother. Help yourself. Rosa is growing weaker by the moment. Before long, she'll be completely paralyzed. But I know just the thing for her. Scale bark leaf, snow grass. Can't forget the bloodberry. You can never have enough bloodberries. I should ask Malia where they are. I need to gather medicinal herbs for Rosa and quickly. Can I help? I need to keep moving or else I'll start getting all twisted up. Sure, thanks, Agnia. Casty, what about this blue flower? We don't need that right now. Okay, so how about this red mushroom? Very poisonous unless boiled. I'd wash your hands extremely thoroughly. 
P -p Poison, what's a dangerous place like that? A place? Plant like that? Wait, place like that doing in a mushroom like this? That's an interesting sentence. <laughs> huh? Why are you laughing? Sorry, I couldn't help myself. I was just thinking that it's your tongue that ended up all twisted. Rose's daughter and heir to House of Glenville, the moment she turns 12 of age, she strives to be like her mother in both public and private spheres. A feat that requires no small amount of effort. Thank you. The blood. Let's. There, that should do it. Thank you, Malia. Hey, Casty. Is mother? Is she gonna die? I won't lie to you, Malia. I'm sorry. No, it's all right. Thanks for being honest. I've been with her all this time and watched her getting weaker. I expected this. Even after she became bedridden, she still put our town above all else. I... I want to follow in her footsteps. I want her to know her spirit will live on in me. <laughs> Why do I have to wait until I'm 12? Oh, rats. I shouldn't have wasted your time while Mother still needs you. It's all right, Malia. And I promise you, I'll do everything in my power to see your wish comes true. Come on. Your mother is waiting. Oh dear, Asphalt. Your eyes are bloodshot. Hold on one moment. I'll whip up some eye drops. That won't be necessary. Oh, double dear. You sound all stuffed up. I hope you haven't caught a cold. My physical condition is optimal. Were you crying? That girl's earnest passion seems to have stimulated my tear ducts. How peculiar. Asphalt. It's not peculiar. The answer is quite simple. It's because you have a kind heart. Wow, I did not expect that. <laughs> Greg, what are you doing here? Is that any way to treat a guest? I'm here to see how our dear Sisley <laughs> Rose is doing. Hashtag totally not sus when this music starts playing. <laughs> <coughs> Bad cough, huh? You don't look so good. Worse than the last time I came by. Why not just die already? Don't worry. I'll look after your lands and... Who in the hells are you? It's Casty. Don't you recognize her? Casty? Oh, yes. That healer, one of those heirs apothecaries. You've wasted your time here. Rosa's going to bite it, and there's nothing you can... Enough! I will not permit you to insult our guest, Greg. Hey, no need to get all snippy. All I'm saying is... If you have something to say, you'll address it to me. I am the lady of this house. <sighs> Ugh. Fine. I've had my fill of this place for today anyway. Speaking of which, I'm a guest in your house too. You can at least see me to the door. Very well, if you'll follow me. Lady Malia, are you sure? Of course, I shall handle this. Damn, why'd that he 
feel it have to show up now. I am sorry you had to see that. Greg is my nephew. He's not a bad man. He simply wants to change this town for the better. Yet, he is too hasty. He plans to force his vision upon the people, and in his hurry to help, ignores their needs. So that's why you're so desperate to have Malia inherit your title. Forgive me. But I think I need to rest now. <coughs> Rosa, I've made an elixir for you. It should ease your pain. Oh, whoopsie. Here, drink deep. Thank you, Casty. I'm already feeling better. I recommend you get some rest. Sleep will aid the medicine in its work. <laughs> you haven't changed one whit, Casty. What was it that you always said? Ah, yes. I only wish to extend a helping hand to all in need. Even without your memories, you are still the same old Casty. Rosa. Casty, if I may have a word. I found this out front. A letter? Apothecary, we have Malia. If you ever want to see her again, come to the tavern in the thieves' quarter. Alone. Malia. I've searched the whole manor and there's no sign of her anywhere. Oh dear. Oh dear. What will I tell Lady Rosa? Where is the tavern they spoke of in the letter? On the north side of town. But the thieves' quarter is too dangerous. People get robbed there. You can't mean to... I do. I intend to rescue her. But... Stay with Rosa and don't worry about me. I can take care of myself. Casty. All right, my friends. That's where I'm gonna end it up. <laughs> Copying Jet's episode of Just for Us playing Octopath Traveler 2. In the next episode, we're gonna go and go into the thieves' quarter and see whatever the hell is gonna happen in there. Goodbye.